Okay, in this video I want to show a few more dimensioning tips and tricks as well as how to dimension circular features such as we have in this faceplate. It has six holes around the flange of it and one through the center. Okay, after modeling it up and placing it in layout and adding the center lines to it, I might point out a few things about the center lines. Um, I left out the main center mark through through the overall diameter and also the centers of some of the holes are directly in line with uh, the edge of the center of the hub there so we have to put a little gap and put the center line in there and I've also messed with the line type scale to get the lines to break the center lines to break okay so now I've moved to my dimension layer want to add some dimensions. Now there's a few things that we want to do. Um, generally when we sh when we have circular features we want to dimension their diameters uh, in their longitudinal view such as I have in the right side view here but I can't do that with all of them so y this would be the easiest one to do uh, but AutoCAD doesn't recognize that as a diameter even if I even if I just use the dimension object, it still just sees it as a linear di dimension rather than dimensioning a, a, a cylinder, right? So to I need to edit this dimension to put a, a diameter symbol in front of it. So I double click the text and I'm, I can um, enter the text editing of that dimension. Now you notice that the dimension itself is highlighted in this deep well this purplish blue which means that that's the associative dimension so I don't want to mess with that really because if I have to go back to my model space and change the diameter or edit the the part at all that dimension would change with any change in the diameter so I would leave that alone but you can see my insertion cursor is on the left of that and I can type in whatever I want here if there were three times them or something I could put a 3x and put a space or something like that and so I can add text to it. I can arrow over to the end of it and I could put in some text there. Well, what I want in front of it with no spaces is a diameter symbol and this is where uh, the reasoning behind using the GDT font uh, comes in. All the lowercase letters are symbols in, in the GDT font and so the lowercase n as in Nancy is a diameter symbol. So there it goes. Now I have a diameter symbol. The Greek letter, uh, is that a phi, uh, is, is now inserted in front of the dimension. So that's how I would edit the dimension text itself and, and what that looks like. Okay, it may be a little less useful to uh, take the dimension over here and do the same thing um, but and because it's it's getting close to the edge of the border and, and it doesn't look as good that way I, I might want to put that di uh, dimension on the, on the end view rather than the longitudinal view so I haven't decided right now I'll just leave it right there the six holes around the center would be the next thing to dimension. Um, it doesn't take six dimensions to dimension the same size hole that are equally spaced as as in normal um, dimensioning. So I'm going to use a diameter dimension, take one of the holes, dimension it. Uh, notice that the dimension, the arrow will always point towards the center of that of the hole. Um, I don't want to put my uh, leader at an angle that's too sharp, too vertical, or too horizontal. Kind of 45, 60, 60 to 30 degrees in there looks pretty good. So I'll just keep it like that. It'll, it should be out of the way of everything else. However, I do want to edit that um, dimension in, in several ways. One is the text. So we want six of those. So six, capital X. Lowercase x is a depth symbol for formed holes, which we'll get to. So six times I'll put a space on that. Um, but I also want 
unequally spaced. So I'm going to arrow over to the end or use the end key on the keyboard, uh, line break, and I want um, an EQ space, right? So equally spaced. Um, I also want the justification to be at the left. So the, you know, any lines in a dimension should be left justified. So let's see what that looks like. Looks great. One other thing, since that's still an associative dimension, I didn't type over that. I can change the precision to my three decimal places as uh, dimensions that are one inch or less need. So there's I'm keeping with good precision protocol there. Okay, so really I've kind of dimensioned everything I need except for um, I have well I have the one and a half inch dimension. I don't have the center hole through here. Um, or there's there's one other thing, and I've drawn this circle to to demonstrate the where the centers of these six holes are are placed. So really, I need to dimension that circle to show that those, and I'll put that dimension near. This looks pretty good over here. That dimension's near those six of those six other holes so that dimension is related to those holes so I'm kind of grouping those dimensions together because they're related to each other and helps me read the part a little easier now one thing I don't want is the center mark of this dimension in on that hole because well it's it's vertical and horizontal where these are in a radial pattern these these six holes so I'm going to select that dimension and edit it a little bit more by going to the properties panel um, there's a lot of adjustments you can make and one of them is where it says center mark and line I'm just gonna put none so that dimension is not putting the default close that now I've, I've removed that center mark for that for that one dimension so I want them all to um, actually I'm going to take that one out too because I'm going to put my own in. I don't think the dimension ones are that pretty anyway, so that's pretty good. Take those out. Okay, so I can put in my own center marks. Um, I think the center mark tool, even if it's on the dimension layer, still looks okay. So I can place that in there, and that goes, that puts a center mark through the entire circle, um, uh, the outside four inch diameter circle, so that's that's good. And that takes care of all the interior circles. Now, here's another circle that I might be tempted to put. Um, well, first of all, um, I already have this dimension, of the one and a half inch dimension, but that hole in there, I kind of am forced to put the dimension on the end view here, whereas before it is, it's said to be preferred to use the linear type, such as I might be tempted to do this. But one of the problems with this Let's, let's spread that out a little bit. Is that you're not supposed to dimension to hidden features. So this di this dimension right here is the extension lines are pointing to lines or edges of, of a feature that are that are actually hidden. So I kind of want to avoid that as much as possible. So I'm going to take that out. Put this back. Come over to my other view where that circle, that hole is not hidden. So just go back to diameter. This is a case where I want to keep my extension lines small. So maybe on the lower part, make sure keep the precision. It's less than an inch, so it needs a precision of three. Okay, am I done? I have the six holes dimensioned and where they are, their placement equally spaced in that three inch diameter tells me, and, and the fact that it's passing through the, the vertical part does place those those holes where they where they need to be. I also have the other diameters uh, dimensioned. Uh, the only thing I'm missing now is uh, length type dimensions or linear dimensions on the depth of these. Now if I was datum dimensioning, I might want to keep the, the flange part as its datum, so that might be a nice way to do it. Or chain dimensioning, I would um, I would dimension right from that 0.5, but that looks like 
that's all I need to do. And that's okay too. That 0.5 with the three decimal places is not is too big for in between, so um, it looks good that way. Outside the errors, or yeah, outside the two extension lines. So this looks fully dimensioned at this scale, um, not missing anything, and and this is enough to describe the part. Also with this, uh, I remove the center lines for the six small circles, so I want to add, um, I already have basically a, a circle going through all six of them, and a vertical line going through the top and the bottom ones, but there are four that don't have the second line that it needs. So, I'm just going to go use my center layer and just draw the line myself. So, drawing a line, I'm going to track from the center and draw a line that goes through the center. Um, I'm just going to kind of judge how long that line needs to be. I don't want it passing through the edge, so just long enough. And it, it was long enough to break, but it's still not at the center, so I'm going to pick it up. It's at the right angle and move it through the center. So now it's in the correct position, and it looks long enough, and maybe it's a little too long, but uh, I'll use the Array tool. Actually, I'm going to use the Mirror tool because an Array would put it would um, have two lines that are on top of each other, collinear there. So uh, just mirroring um, vertically and horizontally should there's a horizontal mirror line and then those two mirroring vertically puts makes the four so now I have center marks going through all six circles all the small holes through the flange and one major one going through all the concentric holes so at that point uh, completed the drawing add the border title block and such and check my precision um, and that, that's about it.